Now, I don't know about you, but I so enjoy propagating these roses. They just make the most massive roots and they're absolutely beautiful. So a little backstory here. I've got a bag here of rose cuttings that I got from a friend at work. Her name's Galena. I've worked with her for 15 years. We're really good friends. And she brought in a picture this spring on her cell phone of a rose that's blooming at her house right now. Absolutely gorgeous. I fell in love with it. It's just the most beautiful white, but it's actually more of a cream and it's just this light, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it. I just, I love those soft colors. Let's take a look at these cuttings. So she brought these cuttings to me at work the other day and had them in a cup full of water. And it was one branch that she took in the morning. And here is what it looks like right here. So we had this, she brought it in and had this sitting like this in a cup of water and said, is this what you need? Will this be able to do anything? And I looked it over and I thought, I don't see why we can't get some cuttings of this thing and get them to root. So when I look at this, it looks like it's got one, two, three potential cuttings here from current season's growth. And that's what you want. You want current season's growth in the early summer after the wood has started to harden off a little bit. So semi-firm wood, and then you cut the roses off the top, the flowers, and keep a couple leaves intact if you can, so that those leaves can just start making more energy as they're trying to root. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut these down. We'll go ahead and, boy, there's a lot of thorns in there. We'll go ahead and just snip that off. I'm gonna set that aside and then we'll snip these two off here. And now we've got three cuttings. Boy, there's a, I gotta get them thorns off. Now I like bigger material. So this is, you know, I told her a quarter to half inch in diameter, and this is what she could find. This is probably closer to a quarter inch in diameter right here. And so what we're gonna do is leave this whole thing intact. I'm not gonna try and cut it down individually. You might be able to get several cuttings out of this, but the bigger you leave the cutting, the more volume of material to hold moisture, the more, you know, the, the more leeway you have for error and so this this bigger cutting this longer cutting is going to be able to hold on to more moisture more nutrients and support this little guy until it's able to form roots and start supporting itself so we'll start by pulling all these leaves off here down at the base and now we're left with this and you saw in that last rose video that I did or not the last one but the first rose video I did I snipped that end leaf off there and just kind of Let's see, I whittled it down to something like that maybe. You could even maybe take those leaves off right there as well and leave some leaves intact so that it can still do photosynthesis. We've got a nice cutting there. It's probably eight inches long. It's a good semi-firm wood down there. And now what I like to do next is, you know, you don't have to do this, but at the bottom, it can really help. You can, when you break these thorns off here, it opens up little wounds for those roots to grow out of. It's not so necessary at the top of the cutting, but if you do it at the top of the cutting, you're not gonna get poked down the road and these thorns can really become a bugger if you, yeah, that's true, Henry, if you don't get them off of there. So there you go, now we've got this thornless little cutting. It's gonna be easy to work with and we've created some nice little wounds along that stem there. So now we've got the end of this cutting here. It goes Henry again. And this is where she cut this off. And I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera, but it's been a few days. This actually sat in a bag on a counter at my house for a day, staying humid. But the end of that right there is just starting to kind of die back and rot. And this is dry on the top here. And so we wanna cut that down to new material so that we get a fresh start and then we can dip this into rooting hormone. So there's plenty of nodes along there as you can see so that's not going to be an issue you just want to cut that old material off probably about right there and now we've got some fresh material to work with and then I want to take my pruners and just kind of shave a little bit of that material that bark 
right off of there just so there's somewhere for those roots to grow out of and as I've said in previous videos the reason we cut right below that leaf node is because at leaf nodes that's where the highest concentration of undifferentiated cells are and those cells can turn into anything that the plant needs to grow and in this case they're going to turn into roots now we're going to take our cutting and dip it into some rooting hormone and as I've told you a million times before Hormidin 3 is what I like to use mostly for these semi hardwood cuttings. You can use any hormone that you can find. If you can't find hormone, these will root without it. But you'll get a higher percentage of success if you use rooting hormone. And I have some right here. So we're going to dip it into this. And this one is a powdered rooting hormone. We just dip it in there, get it around in there, and then shake off the excess. And then that's what it looks like right there. Just kind of coated lightly with that Hormidin 3 rooting hormone. Now what I typically like to do is take this cutting that I've dipped it in that hormone and just set it aside for about 15 minutes, sometimes a half hour. I do this with my rhododendrons too, and it just gives that cutting a chance to absorb some of that rooting hormone. So we've got two more cuttings left. I'm going to get these guys whittled down and prepare them. There's our three cuttings all ready to go and I can't tell you guys enough I am actually really really excited because this is an absolutely beautiful rose and I can't wait to get these guys going and get it growing here on my property plus it'll always be here to remind me of Galena now there's one more thing that we want to do and if you guys have been watching me for a while then you've seen some of those other rose videos that I did in the past and I think I'll go ahead and put links to all those different videos down in the description below. And then if you're interested in that Hormidin 3, I've got links in the description to that on Amazon. But I did a video last year in which I showed you how to prevent these rose cuttings turning black and starting to rot because I got a lot of questions from people. You know, people were coming out saying, I, I did your original rose propagation style and my rose cutting started turning black and molding. And so because these aren't the freshest cuttings and they've gone through a couple days of sitting off the plant and they didn't come from my place. And so I just want to make sure that we take every extra precaution to make sure that these don't you know, turn black and start rotting. Roses are susceptible to fungal diseases, and so we want to prevent that from happening in the propagation frame or tote or whatever you've got them rooting in. And the way we're going to do that is with this antifungal spray. So this is Dacanil. You can use anything that you can find at any of your big box stores, but I've had this one for years. But this is just an antifungal spray that will kind of saturate the cuttings with and the surface of the rooting medium, kind of rinse it down in. And I did that video previously on this and showed you how I do all that. I'll have that link down there. But we're gonna do the same with this one. Now I'm thinking about using bark as a potting medium because I use it a lot around here. I have good success with it and it drains really well. So I'm not too worried about that one. It's relatively inert. It doesn't have a lot of fungus and bacteria in it. If you guys don't have access to that, don't use potting soil for this project. Use sand because sand is very inert. It drains really well and you'll just be you'll have a lot less issues with fungus or fungal diseases and your rose cuttings turning black. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just saturate these pots with water. We want all this rooting medium to be completely saturated. It drains through really well, as you can see. You would not wanna do this with potting soil because it's just gonna sit and that water is just going to collect in there and it's just going to become sopping wet. You can see this bark drains through really well and I just want to make sure that I've got lots of moisture in there throughout the bark when I'm getting started. 
All right, now the next thing we wanna do is douse these pots with this antifungal spray so that we can kill any fungus that might already exist within this uh, medium that I've got. Now this is relatively inert, like I said, but roses are susceptible to fungal diseases. And so we just wanna make sure that we give them every chance that they can get. So we're gonna spray this with an antifungal spray, and then we're gonna rinse this down through and kind of get it throughout that pot there. All right, so I went ahead and just kind of watered it in just lightly. And now what we want to do is spray all of our cuttings thoroughly to make sure that we've killed any fungal issues that could be going on on the surface of these cuttings here. And I'll flip these over and we'll get the other side as well. Okay, so now these guys have sat for a few minutes with that antifungal spray intact and it's killed any fungal issues that could be going on on those cuttings. And I've noticed a little bit of the hormones rinsed off. Now, I did let these sit for a while and absorb some of that hormone, but just for added security, I'm gonna go ahead and dip them one last time in the powder and just shake it off, the excess there, and just give them a little bit of a boost there. And there we go, I think we're all set. Now the Dibbler police are out in full force today, so we're gonna make sure that we use my trusty little Dibbler here. It's just a piece of metal that I got off of a cattle panel. And I'm just gonna poke a hole in here so we don't push any of the rooting hormone off of the cutting here. And it'll also keep some of that antifungal powder intact. So we'll just go right down in the center here, poke a little hole, and then we're gonna stick our cutting down in there. And then I like to firm around the cutting a little bit. And I'll probably come back and fill a little bit more bark around there just to kind of top it off. Real quick before we top these off, I'm just gonna go ahead and give them one more spray here with this antifungal solution. I'll top them off and then I'll spray the top of the medium one more time. Okay, so it's been a few more minutes. I've topped them off with bark and now I'm just gonna kind of water everything in one last time. Yes, I'm rinsing some of that rooting hormone, but it's all gonna stay down in there pretty well. And then I'm also rinsing a little bit of that antifungal spray down in there too, and that's just fine. We want it all throughout that pot. The last thing we're gonna do is spray one last time all around the surface here and around the cuttings. So we're almost there, and there's one more step, but first I wanna mention, I am not God. <laughs> I do not know whether these will root or not. All we can do is provide the optimal environment. Pro you know, take the cuttings at the right time, prepare the plants ahead of time. That means watering them well the night before, taking the cuttings first thing in the morning, taking fresh, good material from healthy plants, preparing the cutting as it should be prepared, sticking them in the soil or soil less medium, and then making sure that we use the antifungal spray and that the medium isn't full of bacteria or fungus. If you can just hit all of those things there, you'll be setting it up for an optimal environment to root. Will they all root? I don't know, we're gonna find out. But I have a feeling with these cuttings prepared the way they were, we're gonna get at least one or two of them to root and hopefully all of them. Now, some people may say that what I did here is just overkill, and you may be right, it may be a little overkill, but after doing that first rose video, I got so many people saying, Mike, I've got my cuttings turning black and rotting. It's all because of fungal issues. Too much moisture, too much heat, and fungus being in that medium. This is the cure for that, and that's why I'm doing this a little overkill, to make sure that you guys get your cuttings to root. And now the last step is going to be to put this little bottle on top of these cuttings. So you've seen those other videos I did where I use these little soda bottles here 
as little humidity domes and they've got lids on them which makes it perfect because if you've got too hot of a climate you can open these lids and it will let heat escape while maintaining humidity inside of this little dome and I showed that in some of my other videos but we're just going to set this right over this rose here right down in there kind of push it down a little and as long as that doesn't get knocked off I might even bury that a little bit in there a half inch this guy's going to be set and we don't do anything for six weeks and here we are this is their final resting place for the next six weeks or so so i'm going to answer some questions right now that i get frequently first thing i did end up kind of twisting these bottles down i twisted them kind of pushed down and got them a half inch into the potting soil and then kind of tamped it down around there just so if any breeze comes by it can't blow these bottles off so that's going to be set in place i'm not going to worry about that the other thing i do is with these bottle caps you can take the lids all the way off but right now i'm just going to leave them on and just lightly twist a little bit it's going to be open so that some heat can expel out around that but it's not going to blow the cap off i don't want to leave it exposed yet this is a fresh cutting that actually sat on my counter in a plastic bag for a couple days and then it was at work for a while so i want to make sure that it's fully hydrated and it's got the best start possible if we start building heat up in this then we can take that lid off it'll still maintain humidity as long as you've got it in the shade now that's the next point so We've got these on the north side of a building. It could be your house, it could be a fence, it could be a, a garage, it could be any structure where it blocks the sun completely. And I get this question a lot, so I'm gonna answer it again. These plastic containers here should never allow direct sunlight to touch them. You want all the overhead skylight you can get. Lots of overhead skylight. Blue sky, shining photons of light right down on these guys, but you don't ever want the direct sun hitting them or else these cuttings will get cooked. These things will become little ovens and it will destroy your cuttings in 15 minutes. If you don't have a building like this or a fence or something, you can prop something up around these guys to cover them or build something that will shade from the sun. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be really cheap and easy to put together. Even my hoop house that is 50% shade cloth is still too hot to have these guys in. The sun will cook them. This is a nice shaded, cool area on the side of a building that gets lots of overhead skylight. You still want that skylight to trigger these guys to photosynthesize for one and also think, hey, it's summer. We got lots of light. We're going to start producing buds. We're going to start growing roots. We're going to start forming into our own new little plant. It's the growing season. Now, as far as watering goes, here's what I'm gonna do. I get asked this question a lot. When it comes to watering these, I don't ever take these off, the plastic, I don't ever take that off of this container here. I leave it intact. I'll just watch the surface of the bark. If you have sand or bark or whatever it is, they're all gonna dry at different rates. If I come out here, these, these are saturated pretty well. They'll probably, with the heat we've been having, start drying a little bit on the surface within a few days. But I know it's saturated down below. You don't wanna constantly keep this bark or medium saturated. But what I'll do, probably in a week or so, is I'll come out with a watering wand and I'll just kinda of water around the outside edge and let the water soak down through there. And then it'll also start percolating and absorbing down into the center. I don't ever take this off, but I'll just water around the outside edge. If it was so hot and dry in your area that it was still dry on the inside of that, which it should never be, you could take the cap off and water down through there, but you should never have to do that as long as there's humidity built up in these containers. So how often will that be? I don't know. It really depends on how hot it is out here. It depends on how fast these guys root and start sucking up moisture. Depends on a lot of factors, but what I'll do is just watch things. You don't want to just stick these and walk away for six weeks. You want to come out every few days and just look at them real quick and if they need a little moisture just water a little bit If they don't then don't just let them do their thing You don't want to be pulling these cuttings up and looking for roots these roses are going to take Probably a good six to eight weeks to root. So today is June 22nd prime time for rooting roses We're going to come back probably the first or second week of August Take a look at how these guys are doing and see what's going on in there The longer we wait the faster we'll get roots Let's cross our fingers and hope and pray that they all 
start rooting. All right, 22nd of June, here we go. All right, so today is September 10th, and that last little clip obviously was June 22nd. We've come a long way. It's been almost three months. Are you guys excited to see how these rose cuttings turned out? Now, before we go any further, I thought I'd show you the rose cuttings. They're no longer here. I'm gonna explain myself. These things actually rooted over a month ago, but I wanted to give them more time to make sure that they were really well established. These things actually rooted over a month ago, but I wanted to give them a little extra time to make sure that these rose cuttings were really well established because they're very near and dear to my heart. They came from a really good friend and it's a beautiful rose bush. So I left them sitting out here and didn't do anything with them over that period of time until about a week and a half ago. At that time, I took the bottles off because I knew that they were rooted. How did I know they were rooted? Because I've been looking at the bottom of those pots and two of them, the one gallon pots, had a couple little roots coming out the bottom. We should go check that out, guys. And here's where I moved them to. There they are, the two gallon and the two one gallon pots. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? Look at that, the leaves are still green. You don't see any new growth coming off of this two gallon one yet, but I know we've got roots down in there. It's strong, it's still healthy and viable, it's green. None of the wood is withering back. Then we've got our two one gallon pots, and the first thing you'll notice, we've got tons of new growth coming up. Now, you say tons of growth, well, Think about this for a second. This is just a little rooted cutting and it's still trying to root and establish. And we've got from about here on the cutting, well, there it is, all the way down to the soil, we've got just as much growth that is new coming up from that point. So lots of new growth pushing out for that little cutting. Let's take a look at these roots down here. If we flip over the bottom here, we can see that little tiny guy right there, I believe that's a rose root, but if you go along here, I know those two little spots right there, you see them? It's hard to see, little white filament looking guys. Those are rose roots. These are rose roots down in there. All those little white specks coming out of there. Rose roots. And I'm gonna pull this out right now and show it to you. Now I'm not gonna get crazy and do like I've done in every other video and just rip this thing out of here and destroy it. Because like I said, these are very near and dear to my heart and I want them to survive. So what's the thing you would do right now with these cuttings that you want to ensure survive and you wanna make sure that you're not disturbing the roots? Well, you don't disturb the roots. I've done that in past videos because I just wanted to show you guys that it does work, but we're not gonna do that here. But what I'm gonna do is like I did before with some of those other cuttings earlier in the year. We're just gonna flip this upside down and we're gonna see what we can see inside of this pot here. So let's give it a go. Some of this is gonna fall out, obviously, but maybe we can preserve. There it is. There's the rose roots. Look at that, guys. We've got a good, healthy plant. You see that? Look at that root coming around this side, big fat root. Look at that, isn't that cool? Those are all roots coming out of that rose there. So let's get this back in its nice little cocoon, its little home, and we're just gonna leave it like that because we don't want to disturb this. We're headed into winter now, well, fall. The weather's gonna start cooling and it's gonna have little time to get reestablished and this thing is super healthy right now. So I'm just gonna set it over here and not do anything with it. We're gonna let it just go dormant for the winter. All right, so let's take a look at pot number two. I'm gonna get this guy flipped over and you'll see it doesn't have any nice new growth on it yet, but all plants are a little bit different, just like us. Losing a little bit of soil and there it is. Look at that. Beautiful roots coming out the bottom of that guy. And those are all rose roots. There's nothing else growing in that pot there. Look at that, beautiful little cutting, beautiful roots, growing really well. So I'm gonna get this guy back in his little pot here, flip him back over. And why didn't it grow any new growth yet, just like the other one? Cause like I said, all plants are different. And I am sure we've got tons of good roots, I'm sure. By next spring, we're gonna see this thing come out of dormancy and just take off. All right, you guys ready for the grand finale here? The two gallon pot, look at that. Big old fat pot. Why did I do this one in a two gallon pot? I have no idea. Maybe it was a bigger cutting, I can't remember. Maybe I said in the beginning of this video, but let's go ahead and flip this over. This is gonna be a tougher one here. And we're probably gonna lose a lot more, but that's okay. There it goes. 
and there it is look at that in this one this one has some big old fat roots look at that beautiful big fat rose roots nice healthy cutting look at that beautiful i'm half tempted to just i don't know why i'm half tempted to just pull this thing out and take a look at it you guys want to rinse that off and just look at it i mean we got three of them all right i wouldn't do this for anybody but you guys but we're gonna do it we got three of them let's just pull this out and i'm gonna get it right back in there as fast as i can i gotta see what we got going on in here come on little buddy you'll be okay don't worry don't worry old daddy will take care of you all right we gotta gently tease these away so we don't lose them we don't want them breaking up look at that there's a lot of roots down in there guys look at that look at that healthy rose cutting beautiful look at that sucker rooted like crazy look at all those roots in there i love seeing that you guys want to rinse it off we might as well we've gone this far all right here it is all rinsed off you can see all those roots now obviously i would not suggest you guys do this unless your name starts with magic and ends with mike but if it doesn't you know you're just gonna hurt the cutting probably in the long run but i know that i've got another month of time another month of warm weather for this guy to get back in its little pot and start re-establishing little root hairs and get going again and i'm relatively assured this comes from years of trial and error i'm relatively assured this thing is going to take off and do well next spring time will tell but in the meantime let's just enjoy this little thing look at that isn't that cool Look at all that callus, all that bumpy callus. This was just a, a straight stalk, you know, and then all this bumpy callus built up and formed, and then the roots came out of it. I just think that's really cool. And it's neat to be able to look at that and see it firsthand so you can know what's happening down in that soil as it's happening for that little rooted cutting. Oh, one thing that can be really beneficial for little cuttings like this is root pruning. So the other thing I'm gonna do is come along don't worry, it's going to be helpful because we're just going to trim some roots off the bottom. And now by doing that, we've got all of these roots, essentially, just like when you're in an air pruning pot, all of those roots can now start growing little tiny rootlets off of that main root. And it'll just flush out with a bigger, stronger, healthier root system. So there it is. Like I said, today is September 10th. Where do we go from here? Well, the first thing we don't do is fertilize. Unless you know you're going to be bringing it indoors or you're going to have it in a heated greenhouse all winter, you don't want to give it a bunch of high nitrogen fertilizer and try to force a bunch of green growth at this time of year because we're headed into fall and things are going to start going dormant soon. We don't want to trick it and make it think that it needs to start putting on new growth. What we should be doing at this time is just continuing to allow the natural temperatures that are still somewhat warmer to encourage root growth and continue letting those roots do what they're going to do and allowing that cutting to build energy and grow roots and just keep doing what it's doing. Occasionally, if I have a cutting like that and I see the leaves yellowing and I see the stems turning yellow at this time of year when I know I've got another month of warmth left, I may use a weaker liquid fertilizer, not a slow release fertilizer that will last for months. Just a, a weak liquid fertilizer that's a little bit higher in nitrogen because that will just give it a little bit of a boost. It'll green up those leaves. It'll help the stem and the roots to store up a little bit of nitrogen and nutrients going into winter. Other than that though, just leave it alone. And now the question that I'm going to get from a lot of people, I'm sure, is what do I do with this thing now? How do I ensure that it survives the winter? Well, I want to tell you right now, I do have a playlist. Over the years, I've made a lot of videos about overwintering rooted cuttings. I've done lots of different experiments with it. I'll put a link to that playlist down below. There's a lot of ideas for people in warmer climates, really cold climates, and climates in between. But go check those videos out because I answer a lot of questions and some of them i even did the tests right here on my property with rooted cuttings and showed you that they can survive in really harsh conditions at least as harsh as i can get here in 8b we do get down to 12 degrees fahrenheit now i know some of you guys get down into the negatives and really far into the negatives but in those cases you really should be working with plants that are cold hardy to your region you're not going to be growing rhododendrons or at least 
many varieties of rhododendrons in a region that goes down to negative 20 or negative 40. Rooted cuttings are typically as strong as the parent plant. And like I said, in that playlist, I got lots of videos. I've proven this time and time again. So that's it, man. I am super excited that this worked out. I am really excited that we've got Galena's Rose right here on our property. And I'm pretty happy to get back to work and tell her, hey, go check YouTube. I got a video up just for you because I told her I was going to give her one of those cuttings if I could get more than one of them to root. And so she's got a cutting coming her way next spring. Thank you, Galena, for providing these cuttings. I'm really excited to see it grow here because I saw that picture you showed me last year and it looks fantastic. Now, a little note to those of you who are coming on and telling me that you're really struggling with rose cuttings. I can't make you a better rose propagator. However, I can just keep doing my part, which is to do more and more videos, try more and more techniques, and just show you what I'm doing here to have a lot of success with roses. Hopefully, in watching these videos and learning more and more and practicing yourself, you'll get better and better at it. And when it clicks, guys and gals, it's gonna click. And then you're gonna be rooting all kinds of things nonstop. So don't give up, just keep trying. It really does work. I'm showing you guys right now that it works. To those of you who have been successful, right on. I'm really happy for you. Keep it up. It's a lot of fun. Give them away to your friends and family, whatever you want to do with them. So I think that's it for now. I hope that I've inspired you guys. If I have, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along and see how those little rooted cuttings are going to do come next spring because I'll still be here. Will you? I hope so. Join us next spring and we'll have a few videos through the winter. Anyway, have a fantastic week, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios. Adios.